Good evening and welcome to the Simply Colorful Fibercast. Today's date is December 16th, 2016. My name is Lynn Marquidon and I'm your host. Welcome. This is a sew along. We do it every Friday night from 8 to 9 p.m. Eastern and I'm glad you could join me. Grab a project and let's get sewing. So on tonight's show, we're going to review how to do the Raggedy Ann doll hair. We had a request from our, our diva on one of our previous Raggedy Ann episodes. And so I promised I would go over that quickly, how to do the hair. It's actually very easy once, once you see how to do it. I also wanted to show you a finished UFO, show you some, some dolls, and then get into making a squirrel ornament because if you're like anything like me and any of my friends around here, we joke that when we go into a fabric store, we're like squirrels. We go that way or we're like dogs chasing squirrels, right? We see a squirrel over there, over there, over there. And um, so it's just a fun little thing. And I saw a pattern for a squirrel and we're going to make a little squirrel ornaments if all goes well. So let me back up first and clear this clutter away and welcome. Oh, and always send email to lmarquidant at gmail.com or post on the Simply Colorful Facebook page or Google and let us know you're out there. It's always great to see what you're working on. You may recall a couple of weeks ago, we made the guardian angel for our swap with textile tarts. Well, I am so delighted to, to share this angel that I received, that I drew. And Jean, Jean Mitchell did it for me and I love her. And in fact, you can open her up and you can see her feet and she just sits on the shelf. So that was very fun. And this came off. This was on her tag. I had her sign the tag. So I just want to put this back on. We had nine, pe nine people do angels and swap them. We had a nice cookie exchange. And we all arrived at 930 in the morning. So we had a good full day of working on our projects in addition to visiting and doing the cookie exchange and the the guardian angel exchange. So that's working out well over at the Northboro library. Oh, and we talked about, cause I keep mentioning the textile tarts group. It is a closed group. You're welcome to join textile tarts. You get a newsletter every week, you get access to the library and we'd love to have you join us. We are going to, and I didn't say this before and I apologize, there is going to be a membership dues fee every year of $18. So um, they wanted to purposely leave it closed so that it's more intimate. And I think right now there are 25 members or so, and that's it. So I love her. Um, oh, this was a angel that Pat made for me just as a Christmas, Christmas angel. So she's fun. Pat Hinga, her own design, her own face. This one is the Marla Niederer pattern. It's called Bridget. I've been working on her for years. And I finally got around to making her shoes and doing her hair. Maybe you can see her hair and her, her, um, Oh, her necklace and all around. I had a lot of fun doing the beading. I definitely want to keep doing that. And I might keep adorning this a little bit more. I discovered that's a very fun part of the process. I've still been mainly spending my time constructing these dolls, but it is fun to costume them. And so that's been fun. You know, I made her a little necklace and this this basket would be fun to fill up with flower petals or something. Maybe I got that from Pat at the last textile tart. She was giving it away. So it goes nicely with her. So I am going to call that though. Even if I do do a little more adornment, I'm going to call this UFO done. So you'll see that on the website next, next week. Ooh, someone's out there. Let's see who's out there. Let's put her over there. Oh, Chris Myers, she says squirrel, yay. Hi, I was thinking of you. Yes, we'll get to squirrels in a minute. But first, let's go talk about Raggedy Ann and Raggedy Andy. 
This is an age-old pattern. It was a McCall's pattern from, my, uh, was it the 1930s? We had Sarah Kokanowski on and making raggedies with us. We had the one that my mother had made me all those years ago, and many of you out there, Linda Grant, whose mother made just oodles of them, many of you shared stories of your Raggedy Ann's and Andy's that you had either received or you had made over the years. And there is a YouTube video out there, Let's Make a Raggedy Ann. And there was a, a question came up on that, how to do the Raggedy's hair. And I'm no expert, so I just want to say that up front, uh, but I, I promised to share how I do it. And I wanted to show you up close that she has a lot of loopy hair here. The pattern, I think, says you can clip that so it wouldn't be as loopy. There are some that, like, that's a little bit longer that aren't loopy. So you could cut that. And there are more here because when you start a new string, of course, you're going to have some left. There's the back. See how nice and full that is and flat? So I'm going to show you how to do that, do a loop, go back, do a loop, go back, do a loop. And then at the end, clean up here and do a little running stitch all the way around so that you don't see any scalp. So that's, that's the process. I'm going to assume that you've already made the body and you have a flat blank head, okay? I didn't make a head. I just wanted to assume that this is a stuffed head. So assume you have that stuffed head. I don't know if you can see that. And it's, it's rounded, so this will be a little bit off. Basically, Take a darning needle, a sharp pointed needle, either with a single point or sometimes I even like these, you can find them in the upholstery section or upholstery set of needles. This one has three different sharp sides that helps further pu push things in. It's very sharp at the end, but it almost slices the fabric on three sides. That's really good if you're having a hard time. But for now, I'm going to try just this pointed larger tapestry needle. I have just my acrylic red yarn. You can make it red, you can make it orange. I made mine orange because mine that my mother had made me was orange. And that's just felt like Raggedy Ann, but I've seen it in all colors, certainly. My aunts used to make a lot of these and I think they used more red, but I don't remember. So I threaded, I pulled out a big thing of thread and this is probably too much. Because the longer you get it, you don't want it too long because it will ultimately shred by pulling it back and forth. You're going to do a lot of damage to it. So um, let me put my glasses on. And let's just see if we can replicate this. Do you see I changed the quilt behind us? It's that spider quilt. And I, I pulled it because it does have lots of Christmas fabric in it. I'm also going to double this. So I'm remembering that I did double it. Hopefully we won't have trouble pulling it through. So I put my needle at the end of this long doubled thread. And again, it might be too long. And then pretending this is the back here. Oh, and then again, I'm going to take my needle and I'm going to go in on one side, pull it across, go in on the other, make a loop, pull it across, make a loop, pull it across, make a loop. I'm also going to, though, in between those, after each loop, I'm going to take another pull and tack it in there. And I'd say I do that almost 75% of the time. I didn't do it every time because once it gets really full, then you're okay just going back and forth. That makes sense. 
So, okay, so I'm going top to bottom. This is the neck. Start down in the base of the neck because people won't see that. And I take about, whoops, look at what I just did. That wasn't good. About a quarter of an inch. A little scoop of the muslin. And when you're starting to do it, your raggedy and will already be stuffed. And see how I, I pulled that in. I'm going to leave that longer. Then to, to tack it there, I'm going to go around again. to set this end of the hair, right? So now if a child or a dog or something pulls on this, it doesn't automatically pull out. Then you go across the top of the head. And I start in the middle. And I take another quarter of an inch pull. I'll only do a couple of these because it's really, it's hard to see this without it being stuffed. <laughs> right, so I've gone up one. Then I'm going to create a loop. And if other people do it other ways, let us know. Then I'm going to create a loop. that's about an inch to an inch and a half high. This is where the magic starts because now you start to imagine that it really is going to be hair. See, so we've got the loop up there. And then I'm also going to catch it like I did on the other end by going around again. And that tacks it in place. So that that doesn't pull anywhere. So I hope that's making sense. So we've got the top here. Now I'm going to go back down here to the bottom where we started. And right next to it, I'm going to make another loop. And you follow the, the head all the way around doing this. And there are going to, I found in the few that I've done that some yarns work better um, at covering, some colors work better. Sometimes you'll have to go back over. Like you may do one whole set across and then realize, oh, you're still seeing some scalp of your Raggedy Andy and then you can go back a second time. Okay, so there that is. And now I'm down here and I'm going to make a loop. And you'll get into a rhythm so that you have the right tautness. Does that make sense? And of course, when your yarn gets shorter, it becomes easier. It is a struggle. I can't say it's the, um, it, you do struggle through the whole thing. So it's not like you get it after you cast on a few rows of knitting, how it gets easier. This really, you do struggle with everyone because you're pulling a lot of yarn, lot, lengths of yarn, and it's, you know, it's squiggly. So here is the lower loop that I'm again going to tack down. And then I'll go back up and do one more on the top. And that's how to do the raggedy in. I'll show you the finished one too again. So when you pull that, now that it's not going anywhere. Okay, now I'll go back up here to the top of the head and I think you get the idea. All right, 
So you get the idea. Let's put that aside for now. And just show you one more time the back of Raggedy's head and see what we did. We started down here and we went in with our needle and we took a little tuck. And then we brought the thread, the yarn up, doubled up here, took a tuck, and created a loop. Took another tuck to, to seal it in place and then went back down. Did a loop, did a tuck to seal it in place and back. Tuck, back. And so with the tuck, if you can see in there, Hopefully you can see in there how the, what the tucks look like. It ends up looking like a little bead of tucks. And if you see scalp and you don't want to see scalp, like here I see some, you can go back and do another like a, um, a straight stitch over it, like embroidery. And that is, you just keep going over from each, either side and you make your head. So, Raggedy, we have squirrels to go do. Okay, goodbye. 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 She's going to go there. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Now let's put this over here. Squirrels. Hmm, I just dropped. Before we came on, I am not very far along at all. All I have done is cut out my pattern pieces and picked out my fabrics. And I just dropped the ear. Hang on. <laughs> there we go. Here's our ear. And let's see what kind of fabrics we can get into over here. This is, we'll, we'll talk about the clothes afterwards. Yeah, the squirrels have clothes, so that's going to be fun. Check out this craft fur. This is going to be the tail of the squirrel. Yuck. I hope this works because it's a... Oh, excuse me. He's a little squirrel. But. So, squirrel tail right there. Okay. And I want the fabric, the squirrel's tail, to go up like that. So I'm going to put this here. This is going to be interesting to sew. Who's out there? Okay, pretty easy to do. I have three pairs of scissors with any luck. At least one of them will be sharp enough. <laughs> oh, we do do some funky things here on Fibercast, don't we? Oh, boy. Oh, I hate to cut that all away. <laughs> oh, great. There's going to be squirrel fur everywhere. Okay, there's a tail. Look. All right. Let's put that aside. Hmm. Look at that. Look. Oh, brother. Okay. Now, we only need one of these. And now we're going to... Oh, and I should say, this pattern is from Sue Quinn, How to Sew Little Felt Animals. I don't know if you can see that. Okay, squirrel.
squirrel back body when you do these. Oh, this hair is everywhere. Oh boy. Oh, I'm doing my sit up. No, I'm not. Can you believe we are two episodes away from doing this for three years? Thank you, everyone, for being such loyal fiber casters. I love it. Think of the things we've done and learned. And now look at all of the other opportunities to see people working online. Angela Waters, I hope I have her name right, from Craftsy, who has put out a second video. I think I saw Jean post it, and I... I subscribe to it. What a hoot. And I love how they, they edit the videos and they don't take too long and she's she's making some cute quilts. But that's fun to keep us company while we quilt. I keep listening to my for cry, my podcasts for crying out loud. Uh, Adam Carolla, the Adam and Drew show. I keep hearing people talk about, so I just did two heads. So squirrel back body, one gusset for the head. People keep talking about Audible and it's on my short list to go start to listen to more books. Okay, two arms. The good news is this is tiny, so it won't take a long time to sew up or f stuff, actually. Oh, and you know, I didn't bring the stuffing over, so we're not going to be stuffing tonight. We're just going to be sewing bodies together. I think of this is the prototype. Okay. This is the squirrel front that's going to have a couple of darts in the top and bottom. There, and we have to do two legs. So, is everyone fully ensconced in holiday prep? It's nice to just sit for a while. Oh, before we go any further, I want to shout out to T for Wendy. Hi. I don't know if you're on live or if you're watching this after the fact, but welcome to Simply Colorful Fibercast. So nice to have you aboard. You're, and I can't wait to see your hooking, your knitting, and your crocheting is amazing. Okay, so those are two. Oh, and then we need four ears. Two white and two gray. Hmm. Wonder where the white is. There. Oh, I hope everyone is staying warm. The driving and the accidents out west and that cold front coming our way, it's already hit us here in the States is crazy and it's so dry. The air is so dry, I've noticed. I'm gonna look for my white flam felt. Hmm. We use instead let's be creative here okay we have hang on I have to get my scissors and my white fabric 
Let's get creative because I don't know where my white felt is. We'll use this muslin that we were practicing the Raggedy Ann on. And we'll make ears out of that. Okay. So, let's draw a couple more ears on that. Even though it's, <laughs> it's not really even ironed, but that's okay. Squirrels out in the wild don't get their ears ironed. Has anyone ever had squirrels in their house, in their walls? They're awful to get rid of. We had them when we were living on a street called Meserve Street. It was an old house, old small house that we had fixed up and we were, we lived in it for several years. And those squirrels figured out how to get inside the house and ugh, especially when it got cold, like this time of the winter, you just knew you were going to hear them in the walls, right? But the have a heart traps do work. Just have to be patient. So now I'm just cutting out the pieces, which is kind of nice on this Friday night. I can hear the band downstairs. They're playing away. Interesting news on my job front. I got a note today. I work either I'm traveling or I work out of my house, right? I no longer have a office at a big um, office complex. We got a note saying that they, and I'm hoping it's, it's wrong because I can't do my job without it. They're saying they're taking away my cell phone. I have to turn my number into my personal plan. And then I guess I can get reimbursed for business related calls. So it's happening, and I do use my phone for both personal and, and business. So I don't know. They, they made some comment about how we're supposed to use Skype or other voice over IP, commu voice communication. And I think I'm going to have to have them put – so they're not going to pay for a pay phone, cell phone. I'm either going to have to get an office with a phone because you can't do your job without a phone, or they're going to have to put in a phone here at the house that I can use. As it is, the internet service they don't pay for, which is ridiculous, but I, we agreed to it because it was easier to work from home. No one that I work with is in at a local office. So it was just a waste of commuting time. And so we'll see. Never a dull moment. But for the next couple of weeks, I'm only working a few days. So and I hope a lot of you out there can take some time off. Can visit family and do some fun, exciting things and take your time. It's going to be interesting sewing a gusset into the squirrel's head to make the pointy nose. Kind of fun to cut the felt. There's one. I have so much felted wool upstairs. I bet that would make a nice, a nice squirrel. This is the compressed pieces 
of felt fiber. And I want to say it's acrylic. I'm not sure there's wool in it. Yep. Made with E. coli 100% polyester fiber. Made from recycled post-consumer plastic bottles. That's cool. All right. So now we have all our pieces, including our tail, our squirrel tail. <laughs> I have gray orophil in my machine. And now it's time to sew up all of the pieces and then stuff them. I'm going to put my, my stitch count down to 1.6. And you know, this might not be very gratifying because I am not going to stuff this tonight. So we may have to just make a few of these and I'll have to post a picture. I think I'm going to get a needle here and some gray thread. I can come back. Oops, I just broke that. Great. I can come back with some embroidery thread because we're going to need to do the noses with embroidery thread. I can come back and adorn these ears, but for now, hmm. I actually want to cut down to size. There we go, that's better. And then what I have to do on each of these ears is fold it in half, like the ears of a squirrel do. Maybe I'll leave that for now. Okay, so I'm folding the ear in half. Okay. And then I'm putting it on the squirrel's head, facing down with a pin. We're going to catch that in the seam. Okay. Let's do the other one, the other ear. Oh, it's so nice to just relax and do this. And I would understand if some of you out there don't have a project going on right now. If you're watching this live, hopefully, hopefully you do. And you're getting a lot done because it's amazing how much we can get done in 60 minutes. But if you don't, if you're just channel surfing, you happen to find us, welcome. We love to sew together. I'm usually quilting, but... As longtime fiber casters know, this, this little doll buzz has hit me. And so I've been mixing up our quilting with making these, in this case tonight, a little rodent. <laughs> uh, and we have to make sure 
to position the ears correctly toward the nose, toward the snout. Okay. So there we go. We have two ears and I'm going to tack those. And now what we're going to do is we're going to sew the two tops together after I tack the ears down and put a gusset in the top of his head. All with very little stitches. So 1.6 might not even be small enough, but I think he'll be okay. Did I tell you about the machine that Sarah found last weekend after textile tarts? Sarah and I went to a consignment shop over in Northboro. And there was a green singer there. Turns out it was a 180, a singer 185. J or S, one of those, in the coolest mint green color, weighed a ton, was in beautiful, pristine shape. And she was able to buy it. Oh, oh what's going on? She bought it and she's already brought it down to someone she knows in Rhode Island. Bob is his name. Who? Um, is going to give it a, a once over. Okay, there we go. So that's tacked. This is tacked. So why did I bring that up? <laughs> oh, I know why I brought it up. In doing research on that particular model of Singer, it is very well known for making very small stitches, which will be perfect for doll making. There we go. Just going to trim that a little bit. Okay. There. And even though this, ah, uh, what is going on with my machine? Hmm. That's going to be frustrating. <laughs> okay, the bottom was doing okay. The bobbin, it's this top. It's too tight. Okay, let's do a gusset. I'll check and see who's out there. This is the type of thing that you almost don't want to pin because you're going to have to just move it around. As you go. Okay, here we go. Which is what we're going to do. My machine cooperates. And I'm only taking like an eighth of an inch. allowance here. 
I'm just twisting both pieces around as I go. Pins would only get in the way. Okay, so there's the first side. Now let's do the other side. Same drill. See, I'm gonna have to pull the gusset pretty far. It's not quite fitting as well as I would like it. Ah! Oh, and my machine just broke again. What the heck? have the needle in. I'm switching around the needle. Nope. I put in a new needle and that's right. mess. Uh, well, this will definitely be just a practice. Hello. Who's out there? like that at all that it keeps breaking okay so we have our squirrel head on the inside who's out there <laughs> Chris Myers oh, I love you she says damn squirrels they're always a nuisance one way or another that is the truth I should have known so if we turn, oh, whoops, I still have to sew down the neck. Huh. Well, we're just going to pretend that this squirrel has been in a little bit of a tussle out in the woods. <laughs> he's going to look like he's been in a tussle. Man. At that last house I was mentioning, oh, it just broke again. Oh, boy. What is going on? 
at that house. <laughs> Chris Michael says roadkill. That's very funny. Yes, it's going to look like roadkill. <laughs> <laughs> That's a show gone terribly sideways if this squirrel ends up looking like roadkill, which is still a possibility. That's funny. <laughs> uh, uh, brother. And it's looking more like a mouse than a squirrel right now, that little... Snoot. This is ridiculous. I think this is like an epic fail. Come on, don't break on me. Okay, let's turn this guy's head inside out. Oh, so funny. So what are you all working on? Hopefully we're not all making roadkill. See, but now look. <laughs> of course, if I'd had felt instead of stupid muslin for the ears, but look. Starting to look like a squirrel, especially when you you do this in the back. <laughs> uh, who's out there? You guys are very funny tonight. Let's see who's out there. Oh. Let's see. Oh, let me go to the big. So here's our squirrel head. We can do something with those ears, I guess. <laughs> oh, you guys are funny. <laughs> okay, what were we looking online for? I forget. Oh, who's out there? Save me from the squirrel. I think I just saw Jean said something. <laughs> Jean says, Christine is a buzzkill. I think he's cute. <laughs> I'm not so sure about that. <laughs> who's out there? Let's see. Oh, goody, you are out there. Thank you for being out there. Marquet. Marquet says, hello, Lynn and everyone. I'm watching you tonight while sewing on the mystery clues. Oh, that's excellent. I'm hoping to get them all finished soon and hopefully get back to the brown bag mystery. Are you doing the Bonnie's mystery this year? I'm not, but it looks fun and I can't wait to see what it looks like. Marquet says, I wrote last week, but it didn't get there in time. I know. I know. Thank you for writing. She says, well, guess what? I got a new machine today. Oh, that's great. It's a Nelco Bel Air Deluxe Zigzag. No way. It is two-tone turquoise and white like 1955 Bel Air. Stop it. I got it for $2, and I found a white, very tough sewing machine case that is almost like new, also only $2. So today's trip to town was a win-win. I would say so. Are you kidding me? I would. Oh, my goodness. You have to send us pictures. She said, oh, I would send pics when my battery's charged for my digital camera. Cool. She says, I love that spider web quilt behind you. Oh, thank you. Remember, we did that several years ago. She says, how is KB and your mom? They're good, and I'm going to go visit them. We'll all be together by Tuesday night. I can't wait, in Pennsylvania. 
Thank you for asking. Oh, and oh, and I love the little Raggedy Ann doll. You did a good job. Cannot wait to see the squirrel finished. See, another vote for non-roadkill squirrel. Huh. He's going to be a very unusual looking squirrel. Well, hope you have a great weekend. Happy sewing, Marque. To you too, and congratulations on your sewing machine. That is cool. And I bet it works like a charm. Oh, here we go. And Marque, as you, many of you know, Marque is a vintage sewing machine expert. She knows all about them. She writes here, Singer 185J, I have two of them, she says. Great little machines. Hear that, Sarah? And yes, they make a beautiful stitch. Did you get olive oil out of the shop yet? No, I have not. So that's right. You asked me that last week, and I missed that. I will, after Christmas. I have 30 machines in all now, six are treadles, just in case you ask after reading this. <laughs> I love that. I was going to ask. So Marquet has 30 machines, and, and I've seen them. Um, she does a beautiful job in keeping them. She can make anything run, like my mother, and they just look great. Oh, and here's a tip on my machine. Okay, so Marquet also writes, if that material is thick that you are sewing on, then lessen the tension on the machine and make sure you have the right bobbin in. Oh, that's right. I remember one time you said you had the wrong bobbin in your machine when you took it in, but is it breaking the thread or what? Well, good point. I made sure to use my Bernina bobbin when I filled this bobbin, but I might as well take it out. And it is a very thin orofill. I wonder if it's the 50 weight? Couldn't be, could it? It is. Is that the even thinner one? Oh my goodness, now I'm all confused. I almost think something is is like maybe some lint has built up somewhere. I don't know. So lessen the tension. Well, that would assume I'd know which way to go. <laughs> I'm a mechanic, I am not. Oh, I flooded our toilet last night. Yep, Bob was thrilled with that when he came home. It's been quite the week, by the way. I've gotten a lot done. I haven't had to travel. And so, on the personal maintenance front, I've had quite a few appointments, and it's all fine but it was capped off by somehow the toilet overflowed and then it was overflowing just enough so that the cohesion of the water and we have a leak in the toilet coming up. So the cohesion of the water was causing the water to go down over the brim of the toilet and the water kept running. So it went through to the basement. Not good. It seems to be pretty dry because, like I say, it's very dry around here. No, something is pulling very hard when I pull down through the thread. Anyway, not a job for a Friday night, that's for sure. Who else is out there? Let's say hi to everyone. Oh, ding! That must be Maureen in Pennsylvania. I'm coming your way. She says, my ding is frozen. <laughs> Hoping to catch up on quilting tomorrow since six to eight inches in the Northeast is coming. Maureen in Pennsylvania. Oh, enjoy. And Maureen, your new quilting area is great. I love those curtains you made. Look, for those of you who might not have seen, look on the Simply Colorful Mystery Quilt Along. And Maureen posted her curtains, which was another one of her UFOs. I'm so proud of all of you with your UFOs. We are doing great. Oh, and speaking of Pennsylvania and Texas, Patty Bannister, welcome. And we want to send our sincere condolences um, for your mom. And uh, we've been thinking of you. I've been thinking of you a lot. I know you haven't been here and you've been doing what you've needed to do with her. And she knew that and welcome. It's a Friday night. So what does Patty have to say? She says, hi. 
joining you. Oh, with my granddaughter, Addison. So you must be in Pennsylvania. Hi, Addison. It's been a long month already. I did finish my hand piece Texas quilt. I don't have a picture yet. I hope to get one soon. I brought my Hexies to work on when she's visiting and hope to start Addison on the knitting loom maybe tomorrow. It's supposed to be icy tomorrow in Pennsylvania. It's very good to be back watching Patty from Texas. Oh, we're glad to have you back and have a great time with the knitting loom. That'll be fun. Carol over in England. She says, hello, Linen Fibercasters. I am with you live tonight. Last week I was out with everyone from work and so did not get to see you until Saturday night. Well, hello. This is great. She says, tonight I'm still working on the quilting on the last of my homemade Christmas presents. It's a king size quick trip quilt pattern from Quilt in a Day for my middle daughter and it's taking a lot of time to quilt. I bet it is because look at what you are wrestling with. A king size quilt is not easy to do on your machine, but it looks beautiful and you're doing it. Looks great. You, It looks like you're stitching in the ditch. It looks really good. Um, I've done one for myself this size, but I don't remember taking me this long, although that may be my memory playing tricks on me. Yours and Carol, yours Carol in Yorkshire, England. Well, she will treasure that and it will keep her warm. That's lovely. So glad you're out there. Crystal, hello, thanks for following. Wonderful, nice to see you out there. Allie and Peter in hot Queensland. What a difference, right? We have this nor'easter, it's windy, and you're down in, in hot Queensland. She says, really hot here today. Lucky we're going to have Christmas pool party. Ooh, that sounds fun. Wendy is only half an hour away, and unfortunately, we won't meet this time, but who knows what will happen in the coming months. Oh, that's wonderful. So Wendy and Allie have become friends in Alaska, which is just a lovely thing. It's the best part about Fibercast is that we can join other people who have the same interests and love of fiber. That's all this is about, right? Um, let's make the most of every day. I. You're teaching me to do that, and hopefully hopefully, we're connecting people. So this is great. Okay, so not sure how much of Fibercast I will get to see, says Allie, as we are leaving in the next half an hour or so, quote, S-E-W, cute. I've been working on Bonnie Hunter's mystery, hoping to complete part three this evening and then start four and go back to do two, LOL. We're having a low-key Christmas this year, our first time having Christmas at home in five years. We have the king prawns ordered, and no doubt we will spend the day in and around the pool. Hope you and all the fiber casters have a wonderful Christmas. Love, Allison. Oh, to you too. Enjoy those prawns in that pool. Sometimes the best place to be is home. Norma, hi. Norma has been, I love all the decorating you're doing around your house. She says, hey, Lynn, I'm getting to watch tonight. I sure love your quilt in the background. Oh, and the little ornaments you have made. I love handmade items. I hope you and everyone have a nice Christmas and a very merry, a nice weekend and a very merry Christmas. Thank you, and you too. Can you believe it? Is it just a week from this Sunday? Wow. Wow. Oh, and Dawn, hi Dawn. Dawn says, on a cold, cold night like this, it is great to sit at the sewing machine with my lap full of fabric and the cat purring beside me. Oh, that sounds like bliss after a week of work. Oh, speaking of squirrels, Dawn says, now remember Dawn is the author of 300 Quilting Tips on Amazon. You can buy it for your Kindle, great Christmas gift. She says, speaking of squirrels, a friend of mine, a friend told me her friend always decorates the tree with acorn ornaments. So this year, my friend is hiding a squirrel ornament in the tree to see how long it takes her to notice it. Oh, that's cute. Sending smiles, Dawn. I love that you send smiles. Thank you. I'm going to read the squirrel one again. Oh, and I think we're running up against time, but we're going to read this again. Give me two more minutes. Speaking of squirrels, 
A friend told me her friend always decorates the tree with acorn ornaments. So this year, my friend is hiding a squirrel ornament in the tree to see how long it takes her friend to notice it. I love it. <laughs> oh. Well, and there are many more, but we are, I cannot believe we're running out of time. I want to thank everyone for joining me. TGIF. Thank goodness it's Friday, Fibercast Friday, so FF. I will keep you posted on our squirrel. And thank you for the encouragement. Thank you for being there. I hope you had fun. Merry Christmas. But we have one more get together before Christmas. So I'll see you next Friday night. From here, from there, not sure where I'll be, but 8 p.m. next Friday night. See you then. Bye, everyone.